tonight on EA Sports. It's week 11 of the NFL on EA Sports. Indianapolis Colts taking on the Atlanta Falcons. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Tonight we start week 11 of the NFL season with a good one here between the Atlanta Falcons and the Indianapolis Colts. Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we take a look at the Colts entering play. They come in playing pretty good football, winners of four of their last six games. And going back through the tape, I thought they looked pretty good last week. It was a solid win, a comprehensive win. Meanwhile, for the visiting Falcons, they've been cooking these last couple months, winners of seven of their last eight games. And if you extrapolate that out to a full season, they'd be 14-2. and two. And anyone in the NFL today would sign up for that. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And a glance at the man under center at 6'5". He always demands attention. It was fun getting ready for this game, wasn't it? Because normally we talk to the coaches and the players. I think you and I asked to talk to the trainer to see how his arm is going to be. A lot of ice I after mean, last week. <laughs> after last week's game, boy, what a performance that was. And you know who else is having fun? Receivers. Because they get a chance to do what they do best, which is go out and catch the ball. Yeah, and that last week effort, he threw for well over 400 yards. To throw on second down. Rich eluding the pressure right. And they're going to get this up to midfield. That's the first time he's called his own number, but he's got to be overjoyed with the results. He wasn't just going to settle for a modest gain. To me, he was determined to come through with a big message to a defense that slept on him in the pocket. First down, Rich, he finds his man complete. It's Jacobs. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Looking to throw, Rich. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. And you know what else you're looking for? What's that? Who are the freshest guys coming off of the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Operating from the gun, Rich. Under pressure, and he'll go down back at the 26-yard line.
Well, we've seen how this quarterback can beat you with his legs. Saw it earlier on this drive, as a matter of fact. But that time, they had him covered. They really gave him no place to escape because oftentimes they're able to find a crack, a sliver, anything that can get them upfield. On that occasion, nothing open at all, and they swarmed him. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Operating from the gun, Rich. He finds his man complete. That's Stanley. And he's going to be stopped well short of what he needed as the tackle is made at the 18-yard line. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. So out now comes the field goal unit for the Falcons. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. And all in all, a pretty decent opening drive, Charles. Pretty balanced. They had the passing game going and the rushing attack, too. I would think they have to be happy with that start because you get your ground game going, which means your offensive line and your runners are pretty happy. And then you get your aerial attack going as well. So your quarterback and receivers have smiles on their faces. Now both up to speed, awaiting their next possessions for this game. They can't wait to get started again. So now the Colts will get their first opportunity with a football. And let out by their veteran quarterback. He's been around a while. They don't celebrate birthdays for him. They just cut him up, see how many rings he's got around the middle. He has been in the league a long time. And there's a word that constantly gets thrown around with this guy when you talk to anyone in the building. Potential. They are sky high on what they believe he can grow into in the role of a starting quarterback. In addition, there are plenty around the league who think that as well. And years from now, he can still be leading this offense out. Here's Wood, and he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. They'll keep it on the ground again. It's Wood, and he's going to have a Colts first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. When you're dead last in the NFL in third down conversions, the odds are against you every time you face it. How about him picking up that one? That was big for them. On first and ten. Peters. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it'll be second down. Well, this defense for the Falcons, they were terrific in the win over Tennessee a week ago. And what I saw in film was a nearly unstoppable pass rush. Five sacks last week, plenty of hurries given up. So now what do you do on offense? You just max protect, keep everyone in and run the ball, or maybe just one or two receiver routes in order to try and keep your quarterback upright. This is Wood. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. Fourth and short, partner. I mean, this would be a really risky call. Here we are in the first quarter. On They're your own side of the own field. On side of the field. But boy, what a tone setter that would be to go for it and get it, wouldn't it? You're gritty today. I like I'm, it. I'm feeling it.
The Colts send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. This is brought in at the 21. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. Well, they come off a victory over the weekend, but now the quick turnaround here for this Thursday night game. How does that affect how teams like this approach these short turnarounds? Well, wins and losses always factor into, you know, how you're getting ready for the next game. But equally as important when you have the short turnaround, what is your injury situation? Are you losing key guys? And if so, how well have the backups prepared for this? Because you don't have much time to get them ready. They have to be ready before this week in order to play well in this game. The numbers for him from a week ago. Seven catches, 129 yards, and he threw a touchdown in there for good measure. And in doing preparation for the game, you notice where guys rank in the league in terms of statistical categories. He's fourth in the league in receiving yards. That caught my attention in a positive way. Throwing on first down. Rich throwing middle, and it's complete. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now an option play, and he'll keep it. On the move past the 40. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. Now a handoff up the middle. Stanley stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Back to throw, Rich. Aiming for Jacobs, he's got him, reeling it in on the out route. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. He finds his man complete. That's Myers. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And that will bring up second down. Looking to throw. Rich, he finds his man complete. That's Myers. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Caught on the slant. And the Falcons are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. He can really smell 800 catches right now because that last one puts him at 7-9-9, knocking on the door. First down, it's Stanley. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. A great effort there. His seventh rushing touchdown of the year as his guys are able to extend their lead. Second effort there, he was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. He's got it, and now it's a 10-0 lead here in the opening quarter. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. So an early 10-0 lead for him now as they kick it away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. 
Peters. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Now Wood. And he stopped immediately there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Off the play fake, Peters. And this one is incomplete. That looks like it's going to be two empty possessions now to start this football game. I think they're going to have to sit down and talk about what worked for them last week in their win. Sometimes you over game plan, overthink things, get back to what works. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. A 40-yard punt, give him three on the return. The Falcons offense set to go. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Knife's his way forward here, but just three yards on the play. Second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Back to throw. Rich. Steps away to his left. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Now a give, right side. It's Stanley, and he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It's a seven-yard gain and good enough to move the chains. He was solid last week, over 100 yards in their victory on the ground. They want to get that going again. Absolutely. What they also understand is that from week to week, it's not necessarily the same, but they want it to be, right? What they saw last week on the ground, they want to see in this game as well. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. They'll get this up to about the 44. On second down now, Den. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. A couple of extra defensive backs in the ball game here on third and six. Looking to throw. Rich, and that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. A pass there over the middle to start things out. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. Looking to throw on second down. Peters. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Up the middle they go. Wood. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. To throw on second down. Peters. Pressure brought in. Falcons get there for the sack. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, 
Do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer <laughs> counts? No. No, not at all. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Back to throw. Peters. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Falcons will take over here as they get it up to the 43-yard line. That's now a second interception in as many weeks from his linebacker position. And think about all the different techniques he has to employ in a passing situation. Is he spot dropping because it's zone? Is he picking up man-to-man? -man? Is he having to run with a running back or a tight end? In any event, great eyes, head on a swivel, and excellent hands. Yeah, versatility and showing those hands. On first down, Rich dancing to his left. Now he's going to throw deep back over the middle. He's got a man complete. Touchdown. A big play there. 57 yards. And the Falcons are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. So obviously they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. Extra point forthcoming. He's got it, and it's 17 nothing. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, a long touchdown pass into the end zone. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. We know, but uh, oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. And you're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you, just, you, called a I think you just called a desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating, to use a boxing analogy. On second down, it's Wood. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Off play action, Peters. He finds his man complete. It's Wood. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's been a very one sided game so far. They got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. On first and 10, Peters, throw left side, complete to Scott. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Now a handoff up the middle. Wood, and he'll be brought down, it looks like right at the 40. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Throwing on first down, Peters. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. 
second and five. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They have not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. The Colts on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 16. Looking to throw. Peters. He finds his man complete. It's Wood. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? The Colts send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And he didn't quite have the bag spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. So here are the Falcons to take over on offense. They were winners last week over Tennessee, and they've got the lead here as well. They start this drive out first and 10. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Operating from the gun, Rich. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. Now Charles dealing with a third and long. They'll have to try to go back to the air again, and this time avoid the sack. Certainly hard to try to establish momentum when all you're doing is going backwards, not protecting the passer, and he gets dumped on his backside. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Back to throw. Rich. He finds his man complete. That's Jacobs. And it's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. But I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we got this covered. And then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch. And now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. The Falcons send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is fielded at the 27. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Throwing to start the drive. Peters. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. So just three yards on the completion there, and it's second down. Looking to throw. Peters. And he's going to have the hook up to Scott. 
So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now it's third and three. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. On third down, it's Wood. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. The Colts send out their punter as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Rich. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Off the play fake, Rich. He's gonna flip that out to the flat, it's complete. On the gain of three on the play, and it makes it third down and two yards to go. Being chased out left. Wide open receiver complete. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. And that catch, he just hit number 800 in his NFL career. And just think, that puts you in top 35 range all time in the NFL in terms of number of catches. One significant guy in that number, Shannon Sharp, who was a tight end. That's big time play right there. They'll run on first down. Whitehead. They'll get it to the 23-yard line. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Back to throw. Rich over the middle. It's complete. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Operating from the gun. Rich to the goal line, but it's incomplete. So out now comes the field goal unit for the Falcons. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So this lead, Charles, is just continuing to swell here in the first half. Well, it's interesting. When we talked to them prior to the game, they told us that their game plan was take no prisoners, and they've lived up to it so far because everything has worked. No guarantee that'll continue. But all in all, this coaching staff's got to be very pleased by what they've seen. Well, the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back. They're in a bit of a bind, a pretty big bind, down 20 nothing as they start here on first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll be taken down after a pickup of about seven as the clock will stop here for the two-minute warning. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three.
Looking to throw. Peters. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. On first down, Peters. Looking left side. He's got it complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The catch and run going to wind up netting him 33 yards. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Back to throw. Peters, open man here is Scott, complete. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. Looking to throw on second down, Peters. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On first and 10, Peters. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A great play there. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Colts get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yeah. of a half, headed into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, a full half to be played. Is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Taking it about the one. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And the Falcons now are going to go on offense late in this first half. Already enjoying a two-score lead here late in the second quarter. Not a ton of time left. We'll see if they can work this at least into field goal range and try to get three to add on even more to their lead. Throwing to start the drive. Rich, he finds his man complete. It's Myers. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. to throw on second down. Rich, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Throwing on first down. Rich, and that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Looking to throw. Rich forced out to his left. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. On third down, Dent. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and CD in a minute. First, it's time to take a look at what we've got coming your way this weekend in the NFL. Some great games still to come. And I think we highlighted one of the better ones right there as they'll square off with the New Orleans Saints. 
plenty to like about the late afternoon games as well. As you see by the highlight, these guys are in for a battle. Take it on the Baltimore Ravens. And then finally, a good one on Monday Night Football between the LA Rams and the San Francisco 49ers. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Fields it right around the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Well, the Colts ready to go to work to start the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Back to throw. Peters looking left side and he's got a man. That's Scott. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Looking to throw. Peters got an open man. It's Scott. And they're going to get this to about the 44 yard line. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Operating from the gun, Peters. He finds his man complete. That's Wood. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Up the middle they go. Wood. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. First down, Peters over the middle. That's caught by Scott. And the Colts are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Back to throw. Peters. And he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. A great effort there. With his second TD of the game, his sixth on the year. And the Colts have cut it back within a score. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play, even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. And it's good. The deficit, 6, 20 to 14. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. So here comes the kickoff, and what now is just a one-score, six-point game. This taken in at the goal line. 
And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons offense now. But Charles, they still have the lead despite their defense giving up a touchdown on the previous possession. And even though they have that lead, it feels like a back-and-forth ball game where to try to get momentum back, maybe they need at least three here on this drive. I think you're right about that, Brandon, because your game plan doesn't change. I do believe your urgency does because of the last score that went against your team. So what you want to do now is have your own drive and try and make sure that that momentum stays in your camp. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll keep it on the ground. Dent, and he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. He threw the touchdown pass on that last drive, his 20th on the year. And he'll start again here, first down. On first and 10, Peters. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Falcon defense has a touchdown. But that offense trying to erase that deficit, get a little bit closer here and climb back into this game of the third quarter. Instead, they further their disadvantage, Charles, with a pick six. And that defense came out willing to do anything necessary to defend that lead. I think they looked around the huddle and said, who's going to make the big play? Who's it going to be? And the person just ended up in the end zone with the football. He was the one that answered the bell. The defense more than did its job. Now the offense is summoned onto the field as they'll go for two. And he's got it. So they try for two successful. And that bumps their lead up even further. And they turn the pick six into a pick eight with that two-point conversion. I love how you upsell. That is outstanding right there. What a big-time play. Big switch in how this game was going. And then they capitalized a little bit on top. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go-around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. And this one incomplete. 
Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. On third down, Peters. And that will be incomplete as well. The Colts send out their punter as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And it will be Falcon football. Atlanta now coming out on the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Operating from the gun. Rich got his man complete over the middle. That's Jacobs. So the completion results there in nine yards. And now two yards to go on third down. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. They'll run up the middle with Campbell. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Looking to throw on second down. Rich. And he will find his man on the outside. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. They'll try and run for it. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. So this drive going to continue following the conversion on fourth. Here's first and ten. Operating from the gun. Rich firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. On second down now, Whitehead. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Well, that was not what you would call straight line pursuit for a middle linebacker to make this play. He's got to work his way through the clutter to get to the ball carrier on the outside, and he does exactly that. That's called avoiding the trash. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Got a man. It's caught at the six-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Frankly, I don't know that this defense knows what to do anymore. Just look at their body language out there. The passing game has absolutely been relentless throughout. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Now a handoff up the middle. Whitehead. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. 
So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. He'll try again. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. They'll keep it on the ground. Whitehead. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. A great play there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Falcons have moved out in front by three touchdowns. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Atlanta's 11 ready to go, and they kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. An assortment of sacks in this game. This one the product of a good jump and terrific effort. Moves quickly off the snap of the ball. Doesn't let up until he's in the backfield and impacting the quarterback. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Up the middle they go. It's Wood. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Operating from the gun, Peters. And he wisely will throw that one away. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. They're just looking for more of the same. Great first half so far. Good second half. And well, sometimes, I guess, maybe, Charles, these coaches, they don't have to tell these guys much when they're rolling like they're rolling right now. You're exactly right. I've heard stories of some of the best coaches in, in our time or any time having grabbed their staffs at halftime and said, guys, they're playing really well. Don't go in there and give them a whole lot of stuff. Just pat them on the back. And essentially, the speech at halftime is, let's go, guys, and that's it. Yeah, no one's upset the apple cart so far. From the gun on third down, Rich. He rifles one that's intercepted. And the Colts are going to take possession of the football. Now, still down quite a bit here, several scores, but yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about 
is the team that just threw that interception. They've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. Throwing on first down, Peters. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they're going to get this down near the 